Here's the thing to know about Jeremy Irons, the great Oscar-winning actor. He is not the kind of fella to censor himself. Jeremy is a tabloid editor's dream with his scathing comments on smoking. Don't tell me that I'm not allowed to smoke in a 58-acre park in the middle of New York because I'll kill someone. On Downton Abbey, he's compared it to a Ford Fiesta. Probably won't be getting invited there soon. And of course, controversial remarks he made earlier this year in a response to a question about gay marriage. I worry that it means somehow we debase or we change what marriage is. The irony is that Jeremy, AKA Pope Alexander VI on the Borgias, has built a career playing characters who bottle things up. Bryce had revisited the magnificent series in which every emotion was kept in its stifling place. Oh, for heaven's sake, what's the priest for? Reversal of fortune. Jeremy's hemmed-in Oscar-winning portrayal of Klaus von Bülow, the aristocrat accused of attempting to murder his wife. You took them, didn't you? My dear, I've long since stopped interfering. And then there was his partnership with Canada's own David Cronenberg. Dead Ringers, as I mentioned. Jeremy, as identical twin gynecologist, and yes, it is every bit as creepy as it sounds. A lot of you are probably wondering how we divide the work. And the doomed romance known as M. Butterfly. Jeremy has a lot of time and love for Cronenberg, currently the subject of a major exhibit at the Toronto International Film Festival. It's called David Cronenberg Evolution. Please welcome to the program the wonderful Jeremy Irons. How are things? Things are good. It is, um, there's much to talk about with you, and often when I suppose when you go and, and talk to press, it's about things you're doing, but this is, must be nice to talk about David Cronenberg. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you mock, sir, but you'll find yourself oddly emotive. I understand. I understand. <laughs> They're interesting pieces of furniture, they aren't are. they? You sit on this one, feel the difference. Feel the difference. Sit on that one. Oh, right. right. Huh? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Very dirty. All right, there we go. <laughs> but why waste the money making you comfortable? Absolutely. I want to stay on the top of my game, sir. I think of you as a busker. I think of you as a social worker kind of guy. You, I mean, you... You well, busking, busking was because I love singing, right. and I usually travel with a musical instrument of some kind, a guitar or a piano or whatever. Uh, and it was also, at the age I was doing it, a great way to, to pick up girls. Right. Because <laughs> I, I, I'd never learned. I had friends who had this great sort of chat-up line with, with girls, <laughs> and I used to look at them with amazement and think, how can you do, how do, you do that? It's fantastic. Well, you, you had terrible opening lines? Was that I, your just, I didn't know. I mean, I would spend the whole evening sort of looking at someone who'd be... I think, I think they're looking back at me, you know, and by the end of the year, it was time to go, and I hadn't even said hello. Right. Um, but, uh, but, but when you sat with a guitar on a pavement by a cinema queue or whatever, beautiful girls would come up and sit beside you to listen. Now, did you see them and change the song you were playing as they walked? I, I changed everything as they walked, if, if, it, <laughs> if, if, <laughs> if I thought it would get them to stop. You have yeah. been acting from the beginning, then. Well, uh, uh, yeah, although I didn't... I don't much like acting. I mean, I, I became an actor because I wanted to be a gypsy. Right. <laughs> Meaning, you know, travel the world, see yeah, things. travel the world, be outside, comment upon, tell stories, mm -hmm. work very closely with groups of people if I happen to be camping with them at that point. Right. And then we move on and we... Some of us meet up again. And it's actually turned out quite like that. Let's go back to the early days. Want to revisit for yep, a second? Look at this, revisit. watch this. It's going to be embarrassing. No, I don't think I could eat another thing. <laughs> Coffee? Brandy? No, really, Uncle. Oh, we are robbed! And what you need is a private detective. Yes, yes, where to find? Where? We do not know any private detectives, Monsieur. Ah, well, as it happens, I do. There's a firm we've used from time to time. Really? Whether I've got their address... Yes, I have. Here, I'll jot it down for yes, you. Yes, yes, I go now. You show you're in a fit state. Oh, there is no time to lose, Monsieur! Always the wonderful dresser. Is that me? Yeah. What was it? Rivals Sherlock? The Early. Rivals of Sherlock? Sherlock Early, like 70. I've never seen that. That's terrifying. It's amazing. <laughs> First of all... Where course, did you find it? Well, we just have a way. We have a way. We have a way. Will you give me a copy? I sure can. I have to study it. You have to look at it. I do. Without dialogue, you just did this. <laughs> it was quite wonderful. <laughs> it was quite wonderful. Go, tell me what... The Rivals of Sherlock. I've forgotten all about that. It's not in my resume. No. No. <laughs> and I think we know why. <laughs> <laughs> 
the, the trash stuff, the, the, the recycle stuff, the, your, your world view. I want to find out yeah. about what you were like as a social worker. Did, like, did you... I, well, I loved title? social work because it opened up this... I, I had a very privileged education. And, and when I finished, I had no idea really what I wanted to do. So they asked me to go and do social work in South, in South London, where very deprived, very poor people lived. And I ran the youth club on a Sunday night. And I looked after, I visited the old people, and I... So I, I entered this community and, and found a way of life completely different to what I knew. And I remember there was a moment I chucked some kids who were breaking up the party out of the social club on, on the, uh, one Sunday night, and, and they'd gone for me with their guys. And I was under this, pe this, this pile of kicking boots, and I thought to myself, yeah, there's got to be another way to manage people than this. <laughs> Um, but it taught me a lot. But what, it, what, what I didn't get was I didn't get anything back because, you know, social work, you're always giving out and, and, and you're, you're dealing with people who really need your help and they don't have much to give back except thank you. But I, I found I needed nourishment myself mm -hmm. and I think... Uh, performing gives me that right? because I get back from an audience. But you still have that streak that runs through you, this, this idea of social consciousness and, and, and in a sense still connecting to pe social justice in a way. Yeah, but I think we all have that to a certain extent. Not everybody acts on it though, like you, you put yourself out and do it. I, I'm very fortunate in that I have a, a little bit, a little bit of clout, not a lot. Um, and so we made recently this, uh, this documentary about garbage. Mm -hmm and about how we produce too much, how we don't know how to get rid of it, how we, we, we hurt our atmosphere, our health, our uh, food chain by how we get rid of all this garbage we produce. What made you passionate about this? Well, when I learned about it, I wanted to make a documentary about something I thought was important. I make a lot of films which are, uh, which are nice, which are good to see, um, some of them. Uh, but I, I, I thought, let's use that clout yeah. to actually make something which needs to be said. We, we talked about this but outside, but just your character in the mission, like being in a film like The Mission, you are the guy with a conscience. Right? I suppose, yeah. You know, in a way. And yeah. so, you, so you're connected to that kind of art. Is it, yeah. is it through the, the, the fictional world that no, connected you? No, it's not you? through that. It's just, you see, I'm, I, I'm only an actor when I'm working when I'm acting. Mm -hmm. The rest of the time, I'm, I'm a person, and I... Of course I care about things. Of course I care about the mess we're making of so much. Of course I care that, that all of us are in this trap of consumerism that has really built up since the end of the Second World War, where we're told that if we buy, we'll be happy. Mm -hmm. And it's a lie. And as soon as we realise that we don't need all this stuff, um, the economy is going to have to change. Economies at the moment are supposed to grow two and a half, three percent a year in order to be healthy. You, well, why? They can't. You think we'll change? Well, we have to. Economies can't grow like that because the world is finite. Stick around. More with Jeremy Irons right after this. And I'll be left for you. No, no, no. <laughs> Not only is Jeremy a fantastic actor, but apparently he's done his time as a street musician as well. So I'm going to surprise him with a guitar. We'll see what happens next. I do remember when Jeremy uh, called Brian, and we were so excited that he agreed to do, play the old man. He's, it's called The Old Man. That's the character's name. Uh, he's not an old man. And uh, he, le he left a message, and I remember it was like, uh, we kept putting it on speaker, and he just said, Brian, it's Jeremy Irons. <laughs> yeah, it's not a great. No, it's good. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted more. You wanted that more? Was yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. That was just tease, little teaser. The back there with Jeremy Irons. It's important to work with young actors, right? Oh, it's very difficult working with Bradley Cooper. He's so good and so good looking that he makes you feel like an old fart. It's, <laughs> it's really tough. Well, your son, your son can act. He seems to be, yeah. yeah. He's in, Ki in Kiev, in, 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 uh, uh, Russia at the moment making a movie. How do you feel about that? He's a, he's a young, handsome, I'm, talented guy. I'm happy that he's happy. I mean, it's a it's a business which is difficult, which is very different from when I went into it. Mm -hmm. um, but he seems to be doing well, and people seem to like him, and, and and he's happy. It's all you want for your children, really, for them to have a passion. Can you do you tell him what to do and what not to do? No, he won't listen to me. No, at all. And quite rightly, no, because he, he doesn't want to act with you. He's terrified of acting with you. Uh, he's not terrified of acting with me, but he doesn't need to act with me. I mean, people tend to say, oh, you know, Max could play your son or, 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 or Jeremy could play your father, Max. And, and we think, no, 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 we'll do, we'll do that one day. Yeah. But uh, he, he doesn't need me. And, and the business he's gone into is very different from the business I went into uh, 40 years ago. 
you say something that gets quoted in a paper or online or something, oh. it's controversy around. Oh. How do you deal with that? I mean, hey, first of all, you say stuff that sometimes I hear, I'm like, what? What did he mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. No, I mean, that is, that is terrible. The instant news factor, the, the, uh, the whole thing that Twitter and Facebook and all of that have done is, is terrifying. I really pity people who are in power, people who are trying to get things changed, people who want real adult discussion about a subject. It's almost impossible now. When you made the comment about same-sex marriage. I, I, they, they focused on the second half of your sentence yeah. more than the first half. Yeah. And it, but it was quite a thing. Yeah, I know, I know. It, was, it, it got ridiculous. I mean, it was stupid. I'm just, just throwing the ball about. Right. I mean, I believe that discussion, you should be able to talk about everything. Just throw the ball out. What, what would this mean? What does it, what does it change? Let's, let's discuss and... and, and, and as, as, as one, one person said to me, he said, you know, you made this statement. I said, I didn't make a statement, I was in a discussion. Yeah, it's different. It's different. You're just, you know, you're playing devil's advocate, you're just trying... Uh... Maybe if you'd have done it in song... Maybe. <laughs> Nobody will have listened. Well, we're going to find out. Are we? We have a guitar? Where's your guitar? You said you travel with a guitar all the time. Yeah, I didn't bring it to Toronto. No, but we brought one for you. <laughs> Is it in tune? No, I don't use a fish. If I sing a song? You sure should. Are you kidding me? I'm right into it. It's late in the evening. <clears throat> She's wondering what clothes to wear. She puts on her makeup and brushes her long blonde hair. And then she asks me, Do I look all right? And I say, Yep, you look wonderful tonight. That's enough of that. That's Dead <laughs> Ringers is a great one. <laughs> The exhibition is the David Cronenberg Evolution one at the Tips Bell Lightbox in Toronto through January 19th. What a pleasure. Thank you so much. Nice talking to you. Thank you, everybody.